Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Harbor from Home. My name is David Brunel. I'm the Special Events Coordinator at Discovery Harbor, and today we're going to be talking about swords. During the 17th, 18th, 19th century into the early 20th century, there were three standard swords that were used in the British military. Of course, there's other ones, but three standard ones, and we're going to talk about those today. The first sword I have up is an officer's sword. It's a straight sword. They were common across the entire British military, and they were used extensively. As cannons and muskets came into play, of course, swords and hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, became less and less. However, it was still a uh, main part of battles at this point in time. So having proper swords, having them sharpened, etc., and especially bayonets and edge weapons, all were still used throughout this time period. The straight sword is very practical. It's a cutting sword. Um, the officers, of course, had more money watch your rank in the military or the regular military at this point in time. So they were be able to spend more money at this point in time. So they would, could invest, and this is a blue bladed sword, very fancy for uh, for the officers that have a gold hilt to protect your hands from sliding when you were fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat back and down, back, back and forth. And also has a sword knot, which is nice and fancy. We're going to talk about that a little later. And I'll tell you the practicality of the sword knot as well, other than just being ceremonial, like in parades, and ceremonies nowadays. The second sword we're going to talk about is a cutlass. A cutlass is a very crude sword, and the cutlass is mainly used by the Royal Navy. Cutlasses would be issued aboard ships, especially larger ships, ships in the line. Uh, sailors did not carry weapons. So you did not want all your sailors aboard your ship being armed. Of course, that would intense, that probably encourage mutiny if they didn't like what was going aboard the ship. So weapons like cutlers, cutlasses, pistols, um, pole arms, etc., boarding pikes would all be issued just before you're going into battle. The armory would be on lock. The Marines or the, or the British soldiers aboard uh, would be uh, basically maintaining and making sure that's all uh, taken care of, and they would issue these weapons. It's very crude. It's thick, as you can see. Nice crude blade. It does have the sword knot on, on it as well, which we'll talk about a little more. And, of course, these are also famous for, you know, pirate movies because, of course, cutlasses, rapiers, they were the main part of pirates carrying and fighting uh, for Pirates of the Caribbean, especially during those during those movies. The third sword we're going to talk about is a saber. Now, the saber itself, as you can see, I try and get it in there. As you can see, the saber is curved. It's not straight. So the first two swords I showed you do cutting action. So they will slight cut in. They don't do any slicing. So they cut and you have to pull it back out. The saber, or the saber, or a curved sword, uh, slices. So it's actually a more lethal weapon than a straight sword because if you're cutting down and you're coming through, your force of your cut actually keeps the blade slicing through and causes way more damage than a regular straight sword would do. Preferences to the officers um, at this point in time would be they could carry a saber, they could carry a straight sword. There were regular issued swords for different ranks for the British military. And of course, if you were a, uh, I say a colonel, a major, a general, you may get a sword that was handed down to you from family to family because you have a military heritage. You could carry that sword as well. So preferences for officers at this point in time, uh, except for perhaps, you know, ensign, lieutenant, and captain, uh, they could basically use different swords uh, or pick the sword they would like to use. The uh, the only people that would carry swords, I'll say, in the lower ranks would be uh, non-commissioned officers, uh, which would be a sergeant, sergeant major, and they would be issued swords, uh, similar to the first one I showed you, uh, and they would carry that as a, as a significance of their rank. Uh, anything lower than that, uh, corporals do not carry swords, of course, privates do not carry swords uh, at this point in time, so it signified that you were in charge and uh, of, say, a battalion or in charge of at least some unit uh, that uh, you, you belong to. So the last thing we're gonna talk about, of course, we're gonna go back to the first sword and we're gonna talk about the sword knot. Other than being, you know, fancy, you know, they could be fancy and different things. They could be crude as, a, as the one as in the, uh, or on the, on the cutlass. They also had a practical use. So other than being fancy and looking good when they're parading, uh, they would also put this around their wrist and they would hold it like this. So if the sword, you dropped it, it wouldn't leave your hand. 
Because unlike today in video games, you know, if you dropped a weapon or you didn't like what was going on, you can pause the game. You know, you're, there's no leveling up here or, you know, you got to. So during battle, if you dropped your sword, especially if you're aboard Calvary or a horse, there's no way of picking this sword back up. You can't say, oh, pause the battle, please. I dropped my weapon so you can get your weapon back. So the sword knot was a practical tool in order if you lost your balance, etc. You would not lose your weapon. It was always attached to your wrist. So it's just like when you were a child, when you had mittens and the string went right through your jacket, you would never lose your mittens. When you get older, you never want to lose your sword. So this is concludes another Harbor from Home. Thanks, everyone.